In my previous video, I discovered a tiny backlash in the Z-axis, even after all the upgrades. So, is the anti-backlash not the magic fix? Stick around to find out more. In order to fix it, we must first understand, what is backlash? In simple words, backlash is the undesirable play between two parts that are supposed to be fixed together. It is caused by loose fits between parts, that can be a result of improper machining, normal wear and tear, or even by design clearances that are necessary for a part to function. The most common and easy to understand example is that of two gears. Some clearance between the teeth is necessary to achieve smooth operation and minimize wear. But notice when you change the direction, the drive gear moves to engage the teeth on the opposite side. During this small movement, the driven gear does not move. And that can be a problem when your required precision is in micrometers. So how does that relate to the Z-axis of our 3D printer? Let's take a look at this mechanism. Here you can see that there is some clearance between the threads of the screw and the nut. This is necessary to have a smooth operation and to prevent binding. Depending on the precision of machining, this clearance can be very small, or very big. But even if you start with a small clearance, over time, as the nut wears out, the gap can increase. When we try to move our gantry, the lead screw will move until it engages the lead nut. During this short duration, your printer assumes that the Z-axis has moved, but because the lead screw is still not engaged, in reality, there is no movement. And that can be problematic, especially for the first layer. You can see that the problem only occurs when we change our direction of movement. In most prints, the Z-axis will only move up, unless you are using something like Z-Hop, which is another story altogether. But when you home your printer at the start of every print job, the Z-axis moves down for the procedure. Then, the very first movement of the Z-axis is a change in direction as it starts moving up. Now, in theory, when you use a spring-loaded anti-backlash nut, the spring forces the two parts of the nut to always be engaged with the screw. So when you move in this direction, the thread engagement is here, and when you change direction, the thread is also engaged on this side. So again, in theory, there should be zero backlash as the threads are always engaged. And that is the case when you are using the lead screw to drive small loads, like that of a laser cutter or a pen plotter. But let's assume the load is greater, like that of a CNC machine where the end mill must push against the workpiece. Then, if the force applied is greater than the pushing force of the spring, it will compress further and loose the engagement with the threads. In the case of a 3D printer's Z-axis, the weight of the gantry is resting on the nut, and that weight is in fact greater than the force of the spring. I made a small test to verify this. Here you can see I tried to push the Z-axis with the spring. Even when the spring is fully compressed, the Z-axis does not move. So that has made our anti-backlash nut useless. We could try to use a stiffer spring, one which can take the load of the gantry, but that will increase the friction. It will overwork your stepper motors, it will wear out the brass nuts faster, and it could start binding. And if you mount the nut above the gantry, that will solve the problem of the thread engagement, as now gravity is working in your favor. But then, do you really need the anti-backlash nut? If your screws are aligned properly, and move without any binding, gravity will always be working in your favor. The bottom threads will always be engaged, even when you change direction of the Z-axis. The spring-loaded nut will only add additional friction. That however can be desirable in some cases. If your gantry falls down when the printer is powered off, the added friction of the nut can prevent that. But it will not do anything to improve the accuracy of the Z-axis. So to put the final nail in the coffin, I installed the spring-loaded nuts on my Z-axis. And the backlash is still there. The nuts did not have any effect. So I thought to add more weight to the gantry in case the thread engagement is not ideal. Until the stepper started skipping. But the backlash is still present. So the important lesson to learn here is that the lead screw is not always the cause of this backlash. It can originate from any point in the mechanism. So rather than trying to eliminate it altogether by mechanical means, we need to minimize it by aligning the axis and removing points of binding. So the verdict? If you are looking to improve the accuracy of the Z-axis, the anti-backlash nuts will not help you. If however you want to increase the friction to prevent the Z-axis from dropping on power off, they can be beneficial. Thanks for watching and hope you enjoyed this short video. See you in the next one.